Hey everyone, Joe Grant here with a demonstration of a timing-based side channel attack on an electronic system. The board we're going to use for our demonstration today is this little G-shaped circuit board. This is what I use in my hardware hacking training classes. This particular board has some security mechanisms built into it. I'm not going to give away any secrets, but there is one mode that you can enter that I call the pin entry mode. And what this is, is the circuit is going to look for a four-digit pin. And if you enter the correct pin, then the security will be defeated and the circuit will turn into a game of Simon, the memory game. In order to enter the pin, you just push any of these four buttons down here. So let's try... Nope. Each button press gets stored as a byte in memory. The system will wait until the entire pin is entered, all four bytes, before it gets compared to the known good pin that is also stored in memory. This circuit, along with most other embedded systems, uses a standard memory compare function, like the ANSI C memcomp, to perform the comparison. The way this function works is that if the first byte matches, then the second byte will be compared and so on. But as soon as there is not a match, then the system is gonna exit. What that means is the longer the compare routine happens, the closer you are to guessing the correct password. If you're able to exploit a timing attack, you can reduce the key space by a huge amount. For our situation, we have four buttons, and a four digit pin. In a normal situation, we would have four times four times four times four equals 1,024 possible combinations for the pin. With a timing attack, if we're able to identify which is the correct byte along the way, we would try the first byte, make sure we guess that one properly before we move to the second byte, to the third byte, to the fourth byte, then we can actually do four plus four plus four plus four which is 16 possible combinations. So what I have here is the circuit board in the pin entry mode. For purposes of the example, what I've done is used TP7, test point seven, to output a pulse that's directly related to the time of the actual compare routine that's happening inside the batch. So when we enter our four digit pin, we're gonna see a pulse on the screen. The closer we are to the correct password, the longer that compare time is gonna take, so the wider that width is gonna be. Okay, so let's actually start the attack. Since we don't know anything about the pin, we're just gonna arbitrarily choose the first digit. Let's do the upper left button, which corresponds to green. And now we see a pulse of 320 microseconds. We don't know if that's actually the correct byte or not, so let's try another one, yellow. 315 microseconds. So those are close enough, that probably means both of these buttons are incorrect for the first byte. Let's go ahead and try blue. Don't worry that you can't see the LED, that's intentional. So we try blue, and now the width actually goes up to 465 microseconds. Let's try red. Now we're back down at 320 microseconds. So it looks like blue is the widest of the button presses, which means that's the first byte of our pin. So now let's try to figure out the second byte. So we're gonna start with blue. Do blue, green, green, green. Now we're at 620 microseconds. Blue, yellow, yellow, yellow. 465. So we might have already guessed the second byte there. So let's just keep trying. Blue, 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 blue. 465 microseconds, and then blue, red, red, red. 470, so close enough. So it looks like blue, green is gonna be our first two bytes, because now we're up to 620 microseconds. Let's keep going. Blue, green, yellow, yellow. 615, blue, green, blue, blue. Huh, we guessed it, look at that. 775 microseconds, we got all the way and actually entered the game mode, so we didn't even have to guess all four, we just got lucky. That was a little bit of a contrived example because we had a test point directly exhibiting the time of that compare routine. So what if we don't have a pin like that? We'll have to do a little more reverse engineering on our target board, but we just need to find some sort of external stimulus that we can use to measure that timing difference of the compare routine. So let's do that same attack again, but this time let's look at the speaker output because as we enter our pin, we hear the beeps of the button presses, there's a delay and then there's that long beep at the end. So we should be able to measure the time between the last button press and that long beep to figure out the compare time. So we have this resistor here, it's a current limiting resistor that's going to the speaker. Now if we press some buttons, we can actually see the waveform that's driving the element. Okay, so I now have the scope set up that you can actually see the four button presses the compare time, and then the long beep towards the end here. So what we have to do is manually measure the width from that last button press 
to the beginning of that long beep and that indicates our compare time. This will change just slightly as we guess those correct bytes one by one. Taking the measurements can be a time consuming process so instead of boring you while I do it all, I'm going to speed it up. So here we go. All right, so we did it again. Got lucky just like last time where the last two digits were the same. So the final code, blue, green, red, red. And here are some of my notes of measuring the timings as we're trying all the different combinations. So this example is a very simple side channel timing attack against a very simple electronic device. But side channels exhibit themselves in all sorts of different devices out there. Pins on electronic locks and safes. Password protection of debug and bootloader access on microcontrollers. A cryptographic hash being computed and compared as part of a secure boot process. Just to name a few. Anything that retrieves and compares a password byte by byte could potentially have a timing imbalance that we could attack. We used a very manual process of measuring the time between things, but some of that could be enhanced by using a microcontroller or an FPGA, a field programmable gate array, for situations where you need to do a lot of measurements multiple times, more so than just a four digit pin. So with that, once again, my name is Joe Grand, signing off, and uh, what else can I say? Side channel timing attack, successful.